through those different phases. Well, never really, or not even do it. I mean, don't, don't, don't worry about doing it. But I'm really wanting to push that this is critical, that this sequence is critical. And Laura, if people say they don't need to move children through those phases, then... Yeah, yeah, see, what... what is it? Yeah, when, when, when Laura said, the guy said, uh, would say, you can't make me do that, I was thinking, I couldn't make him do it. But I'd love to be the school principal there. Because I'd have a slightly different dialogue. If, if, if the guy said to me, if I were responsible for a group of children learning, and someone who I was entrusting to help them learn said to me, I'm not doing that, and I knew it was better, I'd want to have a pretty good reason for not pushing it further. So, supportive or not supportive leadership? It would, would depend on what it was at that point. Um, okay, let's, let, let's keep going because I'm going to take this further. Uh, we've, we've used these structures uh, with all of the strategies and we've really found that they uh, generate the results that they actually have the students learning uh, effectively. Um, at, I must admit, at least to me, uh, no one's actually said, look, we're not going to use this. No one's actually said this, Lord, but perhaps it's because they've been in the, the situations where everyone has seen the value of it. Uh, the, the thing about something like this is that you only need to use it for a short period and you start to think in this way. You see, a, a lot of teachers actually, uh, well, I think it's reasonable to say, probably don't think as much as they might about scaffolding, particularly scaffolding the, the learning of students who have problems. Is that a reasonable statement for me to make? And this is really a guide to get at that scaffolding. Now, so one part of our planning is planning like this. And the underpinning part of this planning is not teaching. It's not a teaching plan. It's a learning plan. I want to make that really clear. It's not a teaching plan. It's a learning plan. The phases across the top are all to do with learning. There, how the learner is progressing. You see, we've had a, a, a lot of focus in, on the, over the last two or three decades on teaching. But often the teaching doesn't necessarily match learning. And uh, I'm wanting to, underpinning all of my work, everything, everything I do, is the learning. And the teaching is almost an afterthought. The teaching needs to scaffold the learning. And a lot of the, I mean, you know, people have asked questions in the past about how big should groups be and how often should we have, you know, groups and all those sort of things. To me, I can't answer any of those questions. You manipulate those things to suit the learners. It's the learning that, that's the key thing. The learning is the bottom line. That's why I sometimes have big whole group learning because a lot of learning sound occur in the big groups. Now, a, a second part of the planning is how we'll actually get at implementing each high reliability strategy each week. So in my uh, grade four science classroom, in my, uh, my grade four cl uh, class, when we, do, we might have three science sessions uh, a week. And if I'm targeting getting knowledge ready and vocabulary, I'm actually going to use the same activities in the first lesson 
every week safe return. And I'm going to use a second activity in the second lesson and a third activity in the third lesson. And I'm going to keep the activity basically the same over, say, half a term or over a term. And my reason for doing that is so that the children can gradually learn to become familiar with the activity as a way of showing their knowledge. Rather than jumping all over the place, I'd, um, I'd want to keep the activity the same. Now, you might say, look, gee, that's going to get boring. It's going to get really boring for the kids. That's interesting. Kids don't find this boring. Teachers do, but kids don't. And often kids aren't asked about whether or not they're boring. The teachers say they're boring. One of the things that makes these not boring for kids is that every time, in every lesson, there's different content. Remember, the activity is simply a tool to help the children learn. And I'm using one tool in lesson one, a second tool in lesson two, and a third tool. I'm not going to have uh, 500 tools that we'll just use randomly. Because if I do that, the children won't have enough time to get to be familiar with any tool. I want them to be really expert with knowing how to handle, say, four or five tools to really learn new ideas and unpack their knowledge. The activities are learning tools. They're tools that help the kids put ideas together more effectively, you know, more, more efficiently. And so, you know, I, I, instead of having a whole hodge, you know, a whole smorgasbord up, I'm really avoiding, trying to avoid negative words. Instead of having a, a whole range of activities I'm going to select from, I, I want to be very systematic in how I do it. And I want the children to learn to, to become familiar with particular tools so they can use them more and more effectively. Is that OK? I'm really happy to be questioned and attacked on all this because I'm probably going against what some people believe. Yeah, you're working out the meaning in all of them. These are just different tools, different ways of doing it. In lesson two, we're focusing on uh, images of sentences and, and pulling out the words uh, for the getting knowledge ready. I, in all of them, you'd be working on the meanings. But I might be giving real focus to really being able to say the, say what the word means. Because if I oh, sorry, say how to say the word. Because if I really work on the phonological stuff in that then I've got something to hang the meanings onto. You see, if I've got children not uh, being able to pronounce words accurately, then they're not going to be representing the meanings accurately. The, 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 the way I say a word is a doorway to its meaning. And if that is going to be hindering literacy in any area, any geographical area, more than any other, I'd say in northern metro region, that'd be a real issue. I'd really want to target that. Is this OK? Now, so uh, what are some of the key decisions we need